my story begins with my dad. He came here from Italy when he was 14. His name was Peter, and he was an entrepreneur. He was an entrepreneur way before that word was cool, and maybe before that word even existed. He started more businesses than I can count and literally seemed like he could do anything. Because he was the man he was, I had my first business cards when I still had pigtails. And while his just said his name and no title, beneath my name was the bold word, owner. I grew up thinking that was normal, my identity, owner. We were always dreaming up ideas at the breakfast table. I constantly heard the phrase, what the mind can conceive, the mind can achieve. We started a bunch of businesses together. There was the soccer one, the jewelry one, the stainless steel cookware cleaner. We did everything. He even had me writing patents as a teenager. But somehow, as much as I tried, none of our businesses ever quite did it for me. And then somehow, some way, I ended up in finance, working for someone else at a big bank and a hedge fund. For four years, I lost my way. I, I lost my identity. I was no longer an owner. And then, and then I lost him. In that hospital room, I felt every ounce of strength that he had passed to me. But I was still so scared. How would I find my life's purpose without him? I knew I had to start doing something to make me smile again and keep his legacy alive, so I started putting together a program to teach entrepreneurship in his name at my college. It would teach kids the same way he taught me, simply by doing. I started to clean out his old garage and office space in Brooklyn, thinking maybe I could house the program in its incubator there. Now, this place? <laughs> this place was like a 1960s time warp. It was insane. Vintage furniture, two cars, a boat, a wheelbarrow full of nails. It took six months to clean out. About two months in, I was excited, because I'd get to open up the coffee pot closet. You see, his biggest business was a stainless steel cookware company. They kind of amassed everything for the kitchen. They acquired the patent on this coffee pot. It was a new twist on the percolator that was popular at the time. He called it the Unimatic. They sold a bunch, but I knew he had some extras in that closet. So I started putting the boxes in my car. And then I filled my trunk and started stacking them next to the car, shocked to find that there were way more boxes in this little space than I expected. You see, they were stacked from floor to ceiling, so you couldn't see the walls, but I kept expecting to find them. Well, the walls? The walls never came. You see, I wasn't standing in a closet. I was standing in a warehouse, filled to the brim with 5,000 unimatics that he had made in Italy over 50 years ago. They were perfect, just dusty. And the best part is that they were the last 5,000 in the world. And it made me realize this was it. This was his last attempt to start a business together. And now, now I was strong enough to do it. So here I stand, reintroducing these vintage percolators to the world. I've sold a bunch, and people love them. And I get to make people smile now every morning. But what's more is that I found a way to keep him here at the breakfast table, where he and I spent so much time dreaming. If you haven't already gathered, this unexpected discovery completely changed my life. I'm an owner again, but there's more. You see, it also gave me a way to preserve his story. And I can tell it to my kids and to their kids. And I realized that preserving stories, that's my passion. And that's what I'll work on next. And maybe next year I'll be back here to tell you about that. But for now, I wonder, how many of you could find your life's passion tucked away in some closet like I did? How many of you are closet entrepreneurs? You know there's magic in you. You just haven't opened the right door yet. So when you do, please remember that what the mind can conceive, the mind can achieve. Thank you.